Hello, welcome to Elite Weather. Dooley Godot here with the seven day forecast analysis as I take a look at the upcoming weather for the next seven days. So, we're going to analyze what we're seeing out there and what to expect across much of the U.S. And here is a look at the current hazards and things that's going that's taking place across the nation for your Saturday. It is March April 2nd, by the way, as we enter into our new month. Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're all having a wonderful weekend. We do see pretty mild weather across the country this weekend as, as uh, we do have a few weak weather systems that we're going to be dealing with from um, from the Pacific Northwest to the Midwest. So we'll see a little bit of, of wet weather, maybe some snow in some locations, but not a whole lot to fret about out there at this time. So no severe weather today, no heavy snowfall, no excessive rainfall anywhere, just your run-of-the-mill uh, light rain, maybe some a mixed rain and snow up here in the Cascades. You might get one to two inches maybe three inches of slushy accumulations in the mountains a little bit of rain for the valleys and the coastal section so seattle and portland might see a little bit of wet weather as well as we see another area here in the upper midwest in iowa and parts of illinois might pick up a little bit of freezing rain as well as we do have a winter weather advisory for this area and we have our freeze warning down here in parts of tennessee as well as kentucky we're going to see uh cold weather freezing temperatures in the morning hours but that will warm up as the day progresses but we will see that freeze thaw cycle take place in that part of the region so there's no no fire danger today nothing like that no excessive heat or anything um too extreme for your two for your saturday as of right now so let's take a look at the six to ten, ten day temperature probability outlook and as we look down to the southwest we're going to see that above average temperatures southern california as well as arizona parts of southern nevada is going to see those temperatures above average and extending all the way into the up into the montana and north dakota we're going to see warmer than average temperatures over the next from the next six to ten days and here is the look of that same anomaly now that we see a trough come on shore across the western half of the nation and we'll see a ridge out east trough in the west so we're going to see cooler than average temperature begin to take shape for the eight to fourteen days out so we're going to see some maybe some wet weather uh, the Pacific Northwest down into California and um, maybe the desert Southwest might pick up a little bit of rainfall as we see those cooler than average temperatures start to take shape. We get a ridge out east most likely and it's going to bring in warmer temperatures as you can see those warmer than average temperatures here for the, um, the, the southern plains and to the uh, the mid Mississippi, the upper Mississippi Valley, the Great Lakes, as well as the Ohio Valley. We're going to see across the mid Atlantic, New England as well, going to see those warmer than average temperatures. And we might even see a few more events where we could see severe weather in this part of the nation over the next 14 days as well. And here is a look at our precipitation outlook over the next from the six to ten days and we do see a little bit of an increase in the amount of precipitation that's going to see in the high country of montana as well as the pacific northwest we will see a little bit of wetter weather uh as we get a little bit above average but that below average really takes shape here across the southeast we'll see it across the southern plains in the south and the mid-south we'll see warmer and or not warmer but uh, uh, drier than average precipitation rates for these areas over the next the six to ten days. This is through the 11th of April. We'll see those drier than average. So we won't see as much rainfall down here as we be begin to be below average in our precipitation. And here is a look at the next. This is through the 15th of April. We're going to see that drier than average uh, precipitation make its way up into the mid-atlantic states in the northeast as well as florida we'll see drier than average but we will see an increase in precipitation across the western half of the nation especially the northern tier of the west we'll see that weather than average as some of those storms 
begin to take that more northerly track, but we'll see a very progressive pattern take shape. So we'll see a lot of weaker weather systems come across the northern tier of the nation and into the upper Midwest. We will see a little bit wetter, wetter than average weather in these regions. And here is a look at our storm from the Storm Prediction Center. This is our um, our uh, categorical uh, outlook for severe weather, and this is a combination of the likelihood of all forms of severe weather from severe thunderstorms, tornadoes, hail, the damaging winds, heavy rain, and all that kind of stuff. And here we are looking at for your Saturday. This is what we're seeing today for the 2nd of April. We're seeing maybe some general thunderstorms in this area. Again, general thunderstorms for the Dakotas, for South Dakota, in Central South Dakota. We're going to see some generic thunderstorms. Maybe a marginal risk of some severe thunderstorms here in northern Texas. You may see a, 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 a isolated chance of severe weather. And we have generic thunderstorms here across South Florida, South and Central Florida, particularly along the Atlantic side where we can see some of those storms come in off of the Atlantic coast. So that is a look at the severe weather or thunderstorm threat for your Saturday. Here is a look for your Sunday where we do start to pick up a marginal uh, uh, slight risk of severe weather here across Central Florida as well as your marginal risk down here in South Florida. This is where we could see that severe weather for your Sunday. So, but it's not a whole lot of severe weather that's going to be in this outlook here. And we do see some generic thunderstorms that's going to uh, pos the possibility of seeing some of those for your Sunday across parts of Montana and extreme northern Idaho. So that is a look of the severe weather probability for your Saturday and Sunday. Here we are going into Monday where then we see that marginal risk of some severe thunderstorms across central and southern Florida as well as Texas we will see uh, non-severe thunderstorms in Texas, New Mexico, parts of Colorado as well as Oklahoma. Now you can always run that risk of seeing a isolated severe storm, but for the most part, severe weather is not expected in any of this activities as this is gonna be your garden variety thunderstorms in this region here for your, uh, for your, mon for your Monday. Here we are for Tuesday. Now we get into where we could see the potential for severe weather here across central and east Texas and western Louisiana as we will have a weak weather system, a trough of low pressure, a short wave moving through this area on your Tuesday where you can see that potential for some severe weather for that region. And here is a look for your Wednesday. As we move into Wednesday, that severe weather threat moves a little bit further to the east into Mississippi, Alabama, the Texas, the Florida Panhandle, as well as Louisiana, so New Orleans, Biloxi may see that uh, chance for some severe weather. And remember those tornado threats is always there, especially along the Gulf Coast. You can see those water spouts form out over the Gulf and come on shore as weak tornadoes. So that is something that will have to be paid attention to we'll have to watch that as we get into Wednesday so in moving to your Thursday now we see that severe storm threat move a little bit further to the east into Georgia Atlanta you can see that severe weather uh, Alabama as well as eastern Mississippi could see uh, that severe weather uh, possibility for those areas for your for your Thursday so here we are with talk about the snowfall that we received over this winter and this is not this has been the winter not to remember because snowfall really wasn't that uh that plentiful this winter so if you like snow this winter i think may have, probably would have been a disappointment for you we did see some areas here across the far northern tier of the nation, Minnesota, parts of Wisconsin, the upper peninsula of Michigan, uh, as well as North Dakota, you guys saw about 60 inches of snow, which is about 20 inches below average. For the most part, we've been about 20 to 30 inches below average in a lot of these areas where we saw maybe 20, 30 inches here across the Ohio Valley and along the Great Lakes here. We've been below average in the snowfall department for this winter, and I think it's probably 
perfectly safe to say that our snowfall accumulating days are about coming to an end right now. So this is about what we would what we will be seeing for the remainder of this winter. We're not going to add too much to these totals. So uh, a little bit slightly disappointing winter as far as snowfall amounts of concern, especially especially if you are a snow lover. But you know it is what it is. So. But you know, if you in the far the northern, I mean, it's still enough snow. Was still enough snow to work with. So this was a look at what our snowfall for the entire winter amount uh, were. So this is how much we saw across the nation for this entire snow season. As it's unfortunately, and fortunately, if you're like me who don't really care for the snow too much, it's coming to an end. So here we are with our drought monitor. And the drought monitor, the drought conditions will continue, especially for you folks down here in Texas, Oklahoma, we got New Mexico into Arizona, as well as California, Nevada, the Pacific Northwest, up here in the High Plains and Montana, drought conditions will continue for the most part, even though we're going to see the like, a lot of this drought is contributed to by the La Nina pattern as well. But we're going to see La Nina's come to an end as we move our way through the spring. So it will end, but the um, the changes in the weather won't take place until maybe over the summer or early fall of the, later this year. But we will see some extreme drought conditions through parts of Texas and to the southern plains here. So we are going to see lots of situations where there is going to be fire weather, some critical extreme fire weather conditions. I My prediction is for the fire season to be, if not as bad, but worse than last year. The last couple of years, we saw numerous fires through the course of the spring, summer, and fall months. Very horrible fire season. I anticipate that to be the case again this year, as dry weather is going to be pretty fairly common across the southern half of the nation especially in this region right here if we want to talk about the southern plains texas new mexico into the mountains of utah uh wyoming montana the pacific northwest high fire danger again as possible california I, I just don't see any kind of relief in sight for appreciable rainfall unless we get a really strong El Nino to develop before the end of the year and that maybe it can provide some much needed precipitation for the southern tier of the nation, the western section of the nation. What we really need is a really strong El Nino that will help to steer those storms directly into the state of California. But if we don't get that, I don't see anything that's going to come into our climate models that's going to offer us any relief from the drought conditions. So unfortunately, the drought conditions are going to persist and possibly even get worse. Here is a look at our uh, are talking about fire danger here is our elevated fire risk that we're going to see for your saturday for today so again across west texas and new mexico we'll see that fire fire conditions persist here we're going to see that that critical fire weather or extreme uh, uh the um it's going to be an elevated fire weather for your areas it's very dry it's been very windy and a little bit warm as well so where temperatures have been in the 90s the low to mid 90s for these areas so we're going to continue to see that risk for uh fast moving brush fire so if you're having backyard barn fires or anything like that please be careful and Pay attention to what you're doing. Put your fires out when you're done. Don't just leave them and think they'll burn out on their own because a good gust of wind can take those embers onto the grass and, and really spark a next thing you know, your whole yard and neighborhood's on fire. So please be careful with what you're doing out here if you're doing anything involving fire or anything that could spark um you know can make a spark and start a fire so uh be mindful of the conditions down here in south and central texas as we look for your this is for your sunday that fire weather moves to mo predominantly new mexico and parts of northwest texas we'll see that same 
conditions exist for that potential for the fire uh, elevated fire risk. And here is a look at what we're going to see for Wednesday. Uh, for for Wednesday. Uh, Monday and Tuesday are going to be pretty quiet. We'll see a little bit of wet weather down here, so it's not going to be the fire risk is going to be a little bit dry, uh, low. But here again, here we get to critical fire danger again for this same region as we get the dry winds to come in and warmer temperatures start to warm up. So that fire uh, jumps up to critical fire danger here on Wednesday. And here is a look at the GFS. And so now we're going to start going through uh, the forecast model. And for this one, I'm using the European model for this one today. So not the GFS, we're using the Euro. And here is a look at the pattern that's going to be coming up. So here is what we have for your Saturday for today. Let's move on through. And we do see that little bit of wet weather, a little bit of wet weather here down in Texas. Extending into the upper Midwest, Minnesota, and parts of Iowa might see a little bit of snow and rain mixing right here. That's going to make for a couple of inches of slushy accumulation, accumulation across Iowa. That's why the National Weather Service do have a winter weather advisory posted for this region. But we will see that wet weather make its way on off to the east and northeast. And it's going to spread its way across the southern Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley before making its way into the northeast. These, it's going to spread a little bit of wet weather into upstate New York as well as Connecticut. You're going to see that wet weather, maybe a little bit of snow mixed in as it comes in by your um, for your Sunday. Okay, so you'll see that move on through on Sunday. Now we got the next weather system. Uh, let's go back here so we can see this guy develop. It comes off the leeward side of the Rockies into the uh, into the South Dakota. And it's going to develop over Minnesota and start a little 1,000 millibar low pressure center that's going to start right in this region here and make its way to the east. And it's going to, you see, it's going to spread a little bit of snow here across uh, parts of of uh, Illinois as well as Wisconsin might pick up a little bit of snow on that one for your Monday. So this is what we're seeing for your Monday as that guy makes his way on off to the east northeast but we do have a Pacific storm system coming in on the Pacific Northwest and we'll see that guy come on shore for your Monday and it's going to move in and bring in some snow across the mountains and some valley rain and coastal rain okay so that's a look at that storm system but that one's going to affect mainly the northern tier of the nation it's not going to slide down to California and bring rain to LA again. I think the rainy season from Southern California is going to be pretty much done. And as we look down here toward the southwest, or down this toward the south, here across parts of Arkansas, Oklahoma, and northern east northeastern Texas, we are going to see this here. This is going to be an area of some some thunderstorms and severe weather that might inspire some elevated storm activity. So this. I, I can see the potential for large hail and some damaging winds. Might even see some dry lightning from time to time under this weather system here. As the dynamics is suitable for elevated thunderstorms. So we'll see Virga where rainfall might evaporate before it hits the surface there. So it's going to be a very warm temperatures in this region as those storms develop in the afternoon. Heating, the daytime afternoon, the daytime heating is going to spark those thunderstorms there. So we'll see that severe weather take place there. And this is going to be for your Tuesday. So as this moves on, hang on a second, as this moves on off by, as this moves on off by, um, Tuesday evening, we'll see a little bit more organization take place as we see some severe weather here across the deep south, Mississippi and Alabama once again. And eventually that's going to make its way into Georgia and the Carolinas as well. So that is a look at the, 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 um, the, um, the, uh, uh, European model for the next five days. I so here we are when it comes to your maximum temperatures. This is the high temperatures we'll see across the nation coming in for your Saturday. And we're going to see those temperatures in the 70s here across Texas, the south, 
Southwest, 70s and 80s. We'll see some 90s down here in far south Texas, and we'll also see some 90s, a 90 degree temperature here to uh, upper 80s here in South Florida, and then we'll see those 50s across the northern half of the nation. So you get into the Great Lakes, New England, we'll start to see 50s and 60s start to move in as we start to warm up across the upper Midwest. We fall back a little bit for your Sunday here in the upper northern plains. We will fall back, but we do see some of that heat intensify down here across the south, especially in the Texas, as we start to see those mid to upper 80s, lower 90s for a lot of these folks. And in the southwest, here is a look at what we're going to see for your Monday. Monday, again, that, warmer, that warm weather starts to make its way toward the east. We'll see continued warm up here across the upper Midwest as we start to see those 50s become more consistent now, which is what I like to see. The warmer weather here for the upper Midwest. We start to see the mid 50s start to take place and move in across the upper Midwest. We'll start to see that warmer temperatures across the southeast. We start to see some uh, 90s here down in Phoenix, Tucson, maybe parts of the deserts in Southern California to see those temperatures in the 90s. We're about a couple of weeks away for us to start to see in hundreds down there. So that is what it is. This gets to be the exciting time of the year. So here we are moving into your Tuesday now. We do see a little bit of a cool down here across the northern tier of the nation as we get a couple weather systems start to make its way across the country. Bring a little bit of colder air down out of Canada. So we'll see a, a retreat a little bit in the temperatures, but it won't be uh, long. It won't last long and it won't be too bad. So we'll still see those upper 40s, maybe low 50s across the upper Midwest. We'll see those upper 80s start to move in like Atlanta, Jacksonville, maybe Tampa. You're going to see those upper 80s, maybe some thunderstorms here and there. Also, as we move into the as we move into your Tuesday, here is what your Wednesday looking like here. So Wednesday, we're, we're seeing those temperatures as well. You're seeing those upper 80s and 90s. I didn't fit and make my slide perfectly here, so it looks a little funny. But we're seeing those temperatures really warm up across this, across Southern California and Central California as we're seeing those 80s make it all the way into Northern California. So here is a look at what we're going to see for your Thursday. Again, that warm weather across the South. We see those 70s, 80s. It does cool off a little bit down here in Texas. So as we move into Thursday, we will see a decrease in the fire weather danger as that weather does cool down there across southern Texas. But we'll, we'll see those 60s and 50s across the upper Midwest, maybe some 40s here in Minnesota and northern uh, Wisconsin. But as we take a look at our telekinetics now, what we're seeing here is a lot of negativity in the North Atlantic Oscillation. So the NAO, we're seeing, we've seen it be negative. Might see a brief period of where it goes positive before it goes negative again for about the time of mid-April. And that means that here on the East Coast, we're going to see colder. It's going to be colder, maybe a little bit stormier. But we will see those weather systems making their way from west to east across the nation. Some of these faster weather systems. But they may get hung up a little bit as they approach the northeast and the uh, eastern half of the country. They may slow down in their progression and might intensify a little bit as we have a negative a tendency here in the NAO. So the North Atlantic Oscillation is expected to go negative in mid-April. So with that, we'll see stormier and cooler weather on the East Coast, especially the Northeast. Here we are with the Arctic Oscillation. Again, about that mid-April, we see that strong negative um, tilt to the into the AO so that means that colder weather across the eastern half of the nation colder wet weather possible across either about that time between mid in mid April the 11th and the 16th is going to see that colder than average temperatures as well as we do get a brief period of where kind of things are kind of going to be uh, nice for this coming week see this right here represents this week that's coming up this here represents and then next week after the 11th when we start to see that potential for another cool down on the east and perhaps a little bit stormier weather. Here we are with the PNA. 
and the PNA is for the Pacific side and as you see this trough here here we are about the 8th or 9th of, of April and this will extend through the 16th of April and we see a, a strong negative tendency in the PNA so that means colder than average as we saw as the as we looked at in the beginning there of this forecast when you saw that colder than average temperature for the uh, the western half in the Pacific Northwest on that 8 to 14 day we saw that and you can see how it was colder than average this verifies that this is the reasoning behind why we think that it's going to do that here in the next 8 to 14 days across the Pacific Northwest a negative PNA this is colder and stormy weather for the Pacific Northwest and the West Coast so that was a look at the seven day forecast in an analytic form so we just analyzed what our reasoning will be behind every forecast that I do over the next seven days so I will do my daily TikTok forecast as well as on YouTube you'll see my daily forecast you can check them out there and this is going to be the reasoning behind that forecast so you can um, like and subscribe you can leave a like subscribe to the channel right and leave your comments down below in the comment section thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video have a great rest of the weekend and i will see you monday on tiktok and here on youtube with your daily forecast